second, I would uh, I want to thank uh, everyone, uh, every brave person who was uh, who has enough courage to stay here to the very end, to hear to me uh, in person. Uh, thank you a lot for that. And uh, I'll take uh, I'll talk about the nearly the same thing that uh, Premi told us uh, an hour ago. Maybe uh, it is about the superconductivity in dilute polar metals. Uh, especially in strontium titanium. Well, uh, I suppose that uh, Premi told everything about the philosophy, about the stories, and uh, I only have some uh, specific numbers and specific effects. And uh, so let's uh, go. Uh, ah, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, my work with uh, Michael Fegelman, and I will mostly talk about it. Uh, so I will briefly go through the main properties that would be important for us uh because a lot of things were uh, told about the strontium titan during this conference uh well uh there is two main i suppose uh interesting things uh first it is uh uh paraelectric but it is close to the paraelectric transition as uh, <clears throat> as we were talking and uh as a result it has uh tiny gap in the spectrum of transverse optical ponds. And uh, as a result, it has a uh, large dielectric constant and the Coulomb uh, interaction is uh, suppressed. It is like uh, over the 20,000. Uh, this is the first part. Uh, the second part, it is an insulator, but uh, you can dope it with uh, either with niobium or uh, uh, reducing oxygen. Uh, and it uh, became an, a, a metal and even a superconducting metal at a very low uh, concentration of uh, free carriers. It is like uh, the, the Fermi energy is like uh, one milliamp, and it is even less than the, uh, the gap itself. Uh, so, uh, naturally, <laughs> when you start to think about this, uh, you notice that first of all, okay, uh, the really small uh, Fermi energy, the really dilute regime, small density of states, that sounds not good for the critical temperature and for superconductivity. But uh, then you think about the second thing that, okay, we have a really, really small gap in optical phonon spectra. And as Havik Lane persuaded us, uh, one have to think about the uh, interaction of so the interaction of, uh, of phonon of optical phonons with electrons and uh, next you think okay i have to think about the optical phonons uh the longitudinal phonon coupling uh was uh, considered by Korpov, i suppose in 2016 and uh, there was no luck so you only left with the transverse optical phonons okay so what is the simple kind of interaction that you can write? This is basically the square interaction. Uh, so we consider the uh, such a vertex uh, where the electron interacts with uh, two phonons and uh, we calculated the uh, first term uh, expansion of the free energy. And uh, so we obtain the effective potential of uh, two electron interaction via exchange of two optical phonons, uh, transverse optical phonons. And so uh, the main result is uh, described here. It's the most dilute, uh, oh, I suppose it works. Uh, at the most dilute regime, uh, we obtain the static attracting potential between two uh, electrons. And uh, due to the giant's uh, dielectric constant, it's, uh, it is even bigger than the Coulomb repulsion. Uh, so uh, firstly, this uh, mechanism was proposed by Nguyen in 1974, and uh, um, Van der Marl group was uh, thought about it in, I suppose, 2019, uh, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, there was no uh, analytical calculations. Uh, the fun fact is that, is that uh, our papers with uh, uh, Premi Chandra and uh, 
Pierce Coleman and Pavel Volkov, they appeared on the archive for with uh, the difference of like four days, I suppose, something like that. Yes, and basically we have done uh, the same thing. This is the same diagram. Uh, but uh, so this is, I suppose, basically what I have talked about uh, right now. This is how we can calculate this uh, potential. Uh, this is quite understandable. And, and uh, what one may want to look look at is this is an action. And uh, this is basically the first term. It is just a uh, simple uh, uh, optical phonon action. And the second term is uh, the interaction I have introduced. It is square uh, by the phonons. Uh, well, so what next? Next, we can uh, recall some old results by Berkov and Medic Bar Kudarov. Uh, and uh, they calculated in this uh, very, very dilute regime the critical temperature and uh, how it uh, uh, depends on the uh, interaction. And uh, again, the, the main result the, this is just some numerical factors. And uh, the main result is that uh, here, instead of uh, the bi frequency, it appears the uh, Fermi energy. Mm, so uh, then we uh, calculate the zero momentum static potential. I will explain why. Uh, I'm really sorry. Uh, what uh, one have to uh, keep in mind uh, while working with this formula that. Uh, it is calculated in the uh, static limit. So uh, this uh, gives us some restrictions. So we can't uh, do anything if uh, with the dynamics. So we restrict ourselves to only the static potential. And uh, for now, we uh, think about the zero momentum case because, uh, as I will tell you later, we restrict ourselves to the most dilute regime. Uh, so one uh, obtain uh, such a result for the uh, potential. And uh, once again, uh, eta is some numerical factor that came from the cutoff and uh, omega t appears in the logarithm. And uh, this is the main uh, <laughs> This is where the, it appears in the formulas. Uh, so uh, now we just insert the result into the critical temperature and we uh, obtain the plot on the left. So as I said, we restrict ourselves uh, to the most dilute regime. So to the uh, from here to here, I suppose. We're trying to describe the uh, oxygen uh, doped strontium titanate. Uh, once again, why? Firstly, because the dynamics. Uh, about everything else, I will tell you later. Yes, and so uh, we uh, get uh, the plot on the left, and uh, it looks like uh, we get it. And, uh, the plot fits, especially if one will consider the pretty bigger bars uh, from the right uh, from the right plot. Uh, this is a plot from the Benya's group uh, from France, it, it, is, uh, it, it appears on the archive like two weeks ago, I suppose. Yes, uh, so uh, nevertheless, we uh, finally describe the critical temperature dependence on the electron density. Uh, and we estimate the, our only fitting parameter that is uh, sitting in, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, in here in uh, J. Uh, lambda is basically dimensionless J. Uh, so we have the one fitting parameter theory, and so uh, it is it has some reasonable number like the, of the order of uh, one. Uh, this is the first result. Uh, second part, uh, just in the same time, uh, there are uh, Michal Feigenman and Khachatur Nazarian. They done the theory work. Uh, they try to explain the anomalous high uh, temperature uh, test square resistivity in strontium titanate, another feature of this material. And uh, they explain it uh, via the simple Fermi liquid theory, but with, again, with these uh, two optical phonons inter interaction. And uh, they again had one, fi uh, one fitting parameter, this uh, lambda, and their lambda is uh, 0 0.9. That is pretty close to what we have. 
Uh, this is the second part. Mm, the third part, uh, there is, a, I, I, I suppose Remy mentioned this work. Uh, the, there was a work about, uh, from uh, Enderlein et al. Uh, and uh, they applied hydrostatic pressure to the, to the sample of strontium titanate and they observed uh, mainly two things. First of all, the critical temperatures, uh, the critical temperature drops. The second part, the uh, gap in the spectrum of optical phonons rises. So all that we had to do is uh, just uh, looking at uh, these plots uh, add a pressure dependence to the our optical gap and again recalculate everything and look at the plots. And so once again, take a glance at the uh, left uh, plot. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the critical temperature, it's uh, five kilobars drops like several times. And the second, I think I want you to not notice that uh, the uh, density of uh, electron density is uh, that, that corresponds to 0.2% of dope niobium, it is, uh, something like uh, 10 to the power of 20, I suppose. So, uh, so these plots, oh, uh, so these plots uh, are done in, uh, I suppose, somewhere here. And we're sitting in the very, very dilute regime, but nevertheless, uh, we are trying to just make some predictions to see if we will get this effect. And eventually we get uh, we get it. Uh, so we also have the drop like several times, three times I suppose, uh, five kilobars. And uh, this is a plot from critical temperature dependence on the pressure for two different uh, critical concentrations. But again, these critical concentrations that we are restricted to, they are much lower than what uh, uh, those uh, experimental group had. Uh, but still the main effect, I suppose, the same. Uh, this was uh, third part. Now fourth part. Uh, there is a anomalous isotope effect in uh, strontium titanate. Uh, this is basically discussed in the old uh, experimental paper from 1999. And uh, in some more recent paper, uh, but the main idea is that uh, uh, you can uh, is isotope substitute uh, oxygen with its more heavier isotope. And uh, surprisingly, in strontium titanate, uh, critical temperature goes up and goes up like by the half. And uh, this is not what one expects in some regular super superconductor. And uh, we think that we described this effect also because uh, the, sec the second fun fact is that uh, when you uh, isotope substitute uh, oxygen, uh, uh, the system goes closer to the ferroelectric transition. So the uh, optical gap became uh, smaller uh, and one can have to think about that. And uh, eventually uh, this plot, the uh, black points corresponds to the uh, just normal strontium titanate with reduced oxygen. So it has carrier, uh, free carriers, of course, but still. And the uh, red points, uh, they correspond to the uh, strontium titanate with, uh, with isotope substituted. Uh, for the, it, I'm sorry, it corresponds to the isotope substituted samples. And uh, they're substituted in such a way that uh, Red points uh, are sitting in the uh, directly in the ferroelectric transition, so uh, they are correspond to the case when the uh, optic uh, when the gap in the spectrum of uh, optical phonons is closed. It is literally zero. Uh, so what can we do with this? Uh, we can again recalculate everything, but uh, take in account uh, not uh, only zero momentum case, but uh, uh, taking account k dependence and the fact that uh, the gap is zero. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'll fit perfectly. Thank you. Uh, so uh, one can recalculate again the scattering amplitude, and he will again get the nearly the same logarithm. 
But instead of uh, omega t, one have in the logarithm uh, k theorem. So uh, this is, uh, I suppose, the corresponds to the uh, case. I was too shy, to be honest, to steal your plot from your paper. So I will just uh, draw it later. So it corresponds, uh, as Chandra said, to the case when uh, the uh, K-Fermi is the dominant uh, term in all this. Uh, so uh, what, uh, and then again, we can uh, just uh, put it inside the gorkov melik barkodara formula and obtain the critical temperature. So uh, we get uh, these relations. And what can we see? The, uh, we have a factor of uh, 2.5 at the really, really the lowest uh, density uh, regime. And we have the factor 1.8 at the uh, higher density. And the higher density is like 1.2 uh, and 10 to the power of 18. And what do we have here? And here, uh, the, uh, these, the left points uh, corresponds to the case when we have like a four multiplied by 10 to the power of 18. So it is a little bit bigger than this. And uh, the factor there is uh, 1.5. And we have here 1.8. And so looking at the uh, dependence on the um, uh, on the concentration, one can understand that uh, if we will go a little bit further, we will have exactly this 1.5 factor. So I suppose that uh, all the all the effect with the uh, with the isotope substitu substitution lies uh, also in uh, in this fact. Well, uh, this is some uh, theoretical predictions uh, as uh, how critical temperature depends on the uh, on the gap itself, uh, you, you can see that it drops like uh, with a factor of 1.8, something like that. Uh, well, now, why don't we uh, go to the higher densities? Because uh, one can uh, calculate this uh, dynamic potential at the, uh, this is the logarithm that uh, you have seen. And uh, this is uh, first two terms uh, in the expansion over the momentum and over the energy. Uh, and you can see the natural scales that we have. Uh, we have the logarithm that is, uh, that is not a function as we all know. Uh, we have uh, uh, k. Uh, we have mom momentum divided by uh, omega t square, and we have the energy divided by omega t square. So uh, this is uh, where one have to think about because the characteristic momentum is the Fermi momentum. Characteristic energy is Fermi energy. Uh, yes, and. Uh, once again, uh, when uh, the density of the carriers uh, goes up, uh, then uh, these terms uh, became bigger and uh, one cannot neglect them and uh, one have to think about that. If we still can easily take into account the momentum and that was uh, done by uh, Premi and uh, Coleman and uh, Volkov, uh, this is okay, but if one starts to think about uh, the dynamics, then everything cracks apart because we don't have a theory for superconductivity uh, with dynamics because, once again, we use the Gorkov's medic barkodarov formulas and they are all written in the static uh, limit. This is the first part. Uh, the second part, why don't we go to the uh, higher densities? Because in the uh, strontium titanate, there is a non-trivial um, three-band structure. Uh, and there is non-trivial effective mass dependence on concentrations. And also one have to think about uh, how different ways of doping affect the uh, parameters of the systems of the system. So uh, we restrict ourselves. Oh, I had to put the plot here. Uh, we restrict ourselves to this region, to this really small, tiny region at the uh, lowest density limit, uh, where where we have only the superconduct. Uh, dome uh, that corresponds to the oxygen uh, uh, reduction. And uh, there is no multi-band regimes because the second band starts filling somewhere there. I suppose it's uh, two multiplied by 10 to the power of 18. Uh, and uh, so that we can 
use our simple theory, but uh, with the simple theory, we can describe uh, again like uh, three different uh, physical effects. Uh, well, so uh, ah, <laughs> put it uh, here. Okay, uh, so again, the conclusion uh, we described successfully the, uh, the temperature dependence on the career concentration. Uh, we described the isotope effect, uh, we described the pressure effect, and uh, once again, the fitting parameter was found to be really, really close to what uh, uh, was found by the completely another experiments uh, with uh, another temperature range and so on, etc. And so what uh, everyone have to do next, uh, one have to recalculate the Kirchhoff-Miller-Kirchhoff-Darov's theory to the dynamic region. Uh, when we can go to the higher densities. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, I heard someone hand up. I think it's the very last part of your talk. Uh -huh. You showed this phase diagram with, yeah, with yeah. two oh. dots. Okay. Uh, and you said that basically take a second bend into consideration. And then what? You can obtain this, this TC that goes first, goes down. No, no, then... uh, no, 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 no. This is why we do not go uh, to the higher densities because we restrict ourselves to this region where TC goes just up. Right. Then uh, there, uh, somewhere there, the second uh, band starts filling, and right. we but do what not prevent, have. But we'll, what, how... what prevents you to calculate the same with two phonon mediated pairing with two bands? Once is again, well, once again, nothing except the fact that it was my bachelor's work, and when okay, we had it, done everything that we were so fun, you know, we were so happy. So yeah. that was all. Yes, yeah, so well, one of course have to again uh, recalculate all that so that the higher densities, thinking about the multiband structure. Other questions? See anything in the chat? No. I, I suppose Premier took to, to all the questions also. Oh, okay, please. Uh -huh. yeah. Did I understand you correctly? The dimensionless coupling constant was 0 0.9? 1 1.1. 1 1.1. Yes. Under those conditions, uh, for example, why don't you worry about the normalization of the single particle properties? Because when you solve the gap function equation, you have coupling, great. Uh, but the moment the coupling constant is one, they normalize the propagator as well. Maybe uh, masses, no, 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 maybe you, 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 you mean the, I got the idea. You mean the coupling constant, uh, electron electron interaction? No. no, no you already have electrons ah, okay. coupled to fauna. Yes, yes, yes. They give you coupling. And you yes. say coupling is not weak. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Then why don't you renormalize single particle properties to begin with? The propagator itself is part of the BCS game. Z factors, yeah. mm -hmm. effective masses. I understand. I understand. Uh, this it's is like again conventional migdala Lyardberg theory says, okay, just please do it. Yes. Uh, okay. The, this is again the questions about the uh, renormalizing everything because we have. Uh, yes. yes. About lambda versus lambda divided by one plus lambda. Yes, I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. Well, uh, again, the simple answer is that. Uh, because we tried this and it worked. <laughs> uh, the fact is that, uh, of course, the second our thought was that, okay, there is a lot of uh, things that we do not understand here, and we will have eventually think about uh, all those things. And so the questions about the renormalizing, uh, they are among uh, these uh, the things to be done, to be honest. We discussed it, but... Okay. Yeah. Great. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, let's thank the final speaker. Thank you. Uh, Maybe we should also thank the organizers once more for putting this great thing together. Thank you. And Andre wants to say something. And if Piers wants to. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I don't want to say much. Uh, there was a wonderful answer to the last question. It works. So I hope it works <laughs> and it worked this time. So from all of us, Tigran is here. Pierce is upstairs. I'm here. How Young was here. Alex Kamini was here. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, um, Oscar Wafik and Media Maslov could not come. But anyway, they all participated in the organization. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, communicate with each other.
Don't forget about posters that were put online. So if you want to talk to these people, please do so. Most of them put their email addresses into chat so you can get them. And have a nice uh, trip back or stay here for a couple of days and enjoy the remaining of sunshine in this part of the world. And again, thanks very much for coming from all of us. Thank you. I'd, li I'd like to uh, second what uh, Andre's just said. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, we can hear you. Here. I'm never really sure from up here. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, probably I'm the, the organizer who did the least organizing, uh, but there were lots of moving parts behind this. Uh, 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 it's particularly a, a great pity that Masloff couldn't be here because he put a huge amount of work into organizing this event. Uh, but I'd like to uh, call for a round of applause for uh, all the really active organizers who really made this happen. And, and I hope we'll all manage to come to Trieste again in the not too distant future. So cheers and thank you, everyone. Thank you. I think it's lunchtime. Mangiare. <laughs>